Previously during the wedding, while Chu and Lan introduced Xu Ting to the audience, Chu King saw Xia Yu. Xia Yu then surprised him by taking him to see his mom, whom he thought was captured by Chu and Lan. His mom told him the account of what happened to her, which got him angry, and he tried to go and attack Chu and Lan. But his mother stopped him and said they should first devise a solid plan to eradicate Chu and Lan. After on his way home, he met Chu Xingyuan walking alone in the rain, depressed. Chu Xingyuan tells Chu Ting how precious her brother is to her and how he used to care for her when they were young. However, Chu Ting tells her she, the older sister, is only shedding useless tears when she should be out there trying to save her brother, no matter the difficulty or challenge. He leaves her and goes his way. Meanwhile, at the Bai residence, Bei Jingju maltreats Chu Lan and insults him because the Chu family deceived her into marrying him. Chu Xingyuan suddenly breaks in through the window and hits Bei Jingyu, throwing her off. She calms her brother and tells him she will get him out. Bei Jingyu gets angry, she's always angry anyway, and attempts to attack Chu Xingyuan however, Chu Xingyuan resists her, and she wonders when Chu Xingyuan became so strong. Bei Jingyu brings out the Wangshuan gun and threatens to shoot her. But while Chu Xingyuan becomes afraid, Bai Jingyu suddenly grabs Chu Lan and threatens to kill him. She reveals that the gun only contains ordinary bullets, not the Wangshuan bullets, but it's still enough to kill Chu Lan. Chu Xingyuan warns her not to touch Chu Lan, and Bei Jingyu tells her to stand as she shoots her three times instead. Chu Xingyuan agrees and says she must let them go after shooting her. Bei Jingyu tries to shoot her, but Chu Lan bites her hand, causing her to miss. In anger, Bei Jingyu knocks Chu Lan to the ground and attempts to shoot him. Chu Xingyuan jumps to prevent her from shooting, but she shoots anyway. However, while Chu Lan thinks he will die, Chu King stops the bullet with his fingers. He then fires it back at her, hitting her arm and throwing her off. Bai Jingyu stands back to her feet and loads the gun with Wang Chuan bullets. She shoots at them, but Chu Ting runs quickly and hits her hard on her face, knocking her out. Chu Ting takes them to his dorm and asks them what they would do now after they have rebelled against the Bai family and Chu and Lan. They reply that they don't know what to do as Chu and Lan will always find a way to get them no matter where they run. Then, Chu Ting offers that they join him in his quest to form a rebellion against Chu and Lan. Chu Ting assures them of succeeding, and they agree to join him. Zhu Lian suddenly arrives with the news that the Bai family mansion has been burnt, and Bei Jingyu is severely injured. Chu Xingyuan is surprised to see her and asks Chu Ting what she is doing there, to which Chu Ting replies that she is an ally. Chu Ting tells Ji Lian to stop the investigation on his mom and dig up Chu and Lan's dark history instead, as well as all the head chairpersons of the Chu family. Chu King then suddenly receives a call from Chu and Lan, who tells him to come over to her place right away. When Chu Xingyuan and Chu Lan discover that it was Chu and Lan who called him, they ask him what they need to do, and he tells them to come with him to his girlfriend's place. Chu Ting takes them to Cheng Xi's apartment and tells her to let them stay for a while. He heads out with Zhu Lian to the Chu residence, and on the way, Zhu Lian tells him she has sent him all the information he needs about Chu and Lan. Chu Ting immediately sends them to Huawei to release to the press and his mom. On getting close to the Chu residence, Zhu Lian drops Chu Ting. Chu Ting appreciates her for her help while he alights from the car, but she demands more than just a thank you. Then he kisses her and asks if that is enough. Zhu Lian draws him to herself and continues to kiss him. In the next scene, the news about Chu and Lan's dark past is released to the public, and the press gathers at the Chu residence to hear what Chu and Lan has to say. Chu and Lan is angry due to the leaked information, while Chu Tang, who is also present, reasons that he has just started with her. Someone comes to report that Supervisor Bai Yun is around, but Chu and Lan refuses to meet her. Bai Yun yells from outside, ranting about her daughter, Bai Jingyu, being vegetative after getting married to the Chu family. Chu and Lan steps out of her residence to also complain and blame the Bai family for the kidnap of her nephew after he set foot in the Bai residence. The reporters ask Chu and Lan about the validity of the news that was released on the internet, and she replies that they are fake, as someone is only trying to hurt her and mislead others. Bai Yun gets angry that Chu and Lan is trying to cover it all up, and she suggests that they end this with martial art. It happens that Bai Yun is also vexed because she is below Chu and Lan in position when they ought to be equal. Chu and Lan has been suppressing the Bai family with her reputation. She thought the situation would improve after the marriage between her family and the Chu family, but it didn't. She launches an attack on Chu and Lan. But Chu and Lan stops her punch with just one hand. 
Chu Ting interrupts, saying Bai Yun shouldn't embarrass herself as she won't be able to beat his grandma. Bai Yun gets angry and dashes toward Chu Ting to attack him. But Gong Xu suddenly appears and hits her backward. Bai Yun thinks that Gong Xu is also on the Chu family's side, but Gong Xu shows her a warrant from the Empress to investigate the Bai family's fire incident. She tells the reporters to leave immediately and Bai Yun to leave. While she tells Chu and Lan that she wants to do a house inspection, Dakai suddenly appears and tells her to wait. Chu Ting is shocked to see Dakai and wonders what she is doing there. Dakai also shows them a warrant, saying that the Empress ordered her to keep an eye on the case, which grants her the power to give complete orders. She then says that Chu and Lan should be arrested immediately as she is involved in bribery. Gong Xu protests, saying all that was released online could be false, demanding proper evidence if Dakai wants to arrest Chu and Lan. Chu Ting reasons that his plan will be futile if Chu and Lan is arrested. He quickly messages Jia Lian about the situation, who tells him that the Six Kings plans to save her face before the Empress, so she decides to get Chu and Lan arrested, while creating a bad reputation for the Gong family. Chu Ting must find a way to prevent Chu and Lan from being arrested, so he can successfully carry out his plans. Chu and Lan also demands evidence from De Kai that she must be arrested. The Kai leads without evidence and Gong Xu continues the inspection. After a while, they finish the inspection and Chu Ting sees Gong Xu off. Outside, Gong Xu tells Chu Xing that she discovered that one of the cameras near the Chu mansion captured him, Chu Xing Yuan and Chu Lan, so she deleted it. Chu Ting is quite amused and Gong Xu tells him she will support him no matter what he does. She mentions that Chu King has gotten himself involved in politics, and Chu Tsing reasons that he recently realized this. In his previous life, he only did train, but he chose to spice things up in his current one. After Gong Xu has left, another group arrives, the other Chu family members. They blame Chu and Lan for being responsible for plummeting the Chu family's reputation and power. Chu and Lan tells them it is not her fault, but they don't listen and continue to blame her. Chu and Lan, too, refuses to agree. Then the eldest elder of the Chu family suddenly mentions that they have discussed removing Chu and Lan from her position as the head chairman. Chu and Lan laughs and is ready to fight them to protect her position. The eldest elder attacks her, but she blocks it and throws her off while she faces the others. Chu and Lan soon defeats all of them, which surprises Chu Tsing since the five women who fought her are also very strong. Chu and Lan then warns them never to meddle in her actions again. They leave immediately and Chu and Lan begins to feel pain. Chu Ting helps her to her room and heads to his room to message Chu Xingyuan that everything is set. Chu King's mother meets the other members of the Chu family that went to confront Chu and Lan, and they report that they could not match her. Chu King's mother appreciates them, and not long after, she receives a message from Chu Ting telling her that Chu and Lan is injured. She becomes excited that their plan will work. Meanwhile, inside the Chu mansion, Chu Ting watches Chu Xingyuan's and Chu Lan's confession about their grandma. Chu Lan is disguised to be very injured from being maltreated by Bei Jingyu, his supposed new wife, just on the night of their wedding. They confess to the public how brutal and weak their grandmother is. Chu and Lan suddenly grabs the phone from Chu Ting and watches to the end. She then breaks his phone and asks if he is responsible for this. Chu King says she should be concerned about Chu Lan's injuries instead. She grabs him by the neck and threatens to kill his mom. However, his mom appears, and Chu and Lan becomes shot. Chu and Lan insults her and turns to Chu Ting to ask him if he wants to rule over the Chu family with her or follow his useless mother, who cannot give him anything. Suddenly, Chu Qin Ru appears with Chu Xingyuan and Chu Lan to show their opposition. Chu and Lan boasts they cannot handle her, asking them to call out their backups. Chu Ting tells her that they don't need any backup as he has been taking some actions while she was busy with the Chu family elders. He adds that he let her live till now, hoping that he would see any trace of humanity in her since she is his grandma, after all. Chu Lan is told to hide while the others gather to face Chu and Lan. Chu and Lan gets angry and attacks them. Chu King's mom brings out a gun and shoots several bullets at her, but she dodges all. Chu and Lan attacks again. And while Chu Ting creates a barrier to protect them from her attacks, she hits the barrier and breaks it instantly. She lands a punch on Chu Qin Ru, throwing her off. Chu Ting attempts an attack, but she blocks it, grabs him, and smashes him on the ground. Seeing this, Chu King's mother, trying to protect her son, attacks Chu and Lan, but Chu and Lan grabs her by the neck and lands a powerful hit. Chu King gets very angry, unleashes his full power, 
and summons his sword immediately. He attacks Chu and Lan, and while she tries to form a barrier to protect herself, he breaks the barrier and stabs her, leading to her death. Xu Ting returns to his mom to know if she is fine. Exhausted and severely injured, he collapses, but Chengxi carries him. He is surprised to see Chengxi and Wawa. Tang Xian also arrives in haste. She complains that Chu Ting never tells her about his problems, yet he tells Chengxi and Wawa. She grabs Chu Ping's arm and tells Chengxi to let go, but she refuses. They soon begin to yell at each other about who to hold him. Chu Xingyuan sees this and comments that there's a rumor that someone saw Chu Ting getting off the princess car on the first day of military training. On hearing this, Tang Xian and Chengxi turn to him and angrily ask who the princess is. Meanwhile, Zhe Lin is watching them from the nearby forest. Despite her doubts, she is surprised that Chu Ping defeated Chu and Lan, and she reasons that fate is on her side this time. In the next scene, So Chuxui treats Chu King's injuries and wonders how he is injured to this extent. However, Chu Ting replies that it is just a minor injury, even when it is obviously not, and asks about his mom and the others. Xiao Chuxui tells him about each person's condition, and Chu Ting appreciates her for coming to take care of them. Xiao Chuxui uses this opportunity to ask Chu Ting if he can treat her like he treats Tang Zilian. Suddenly, there's a blast on the door. It's Tang Zilian and Chengxi fighting over Chu Ting. Wabua tries to stop them, but they don't listen and attempt to attack each other again. Chu Ting interrupts by blocking them from hitting each other and asking them to get along peacefully because of him, but both punch him in the face instead. Xiao Chuxi, confused, asks Tang Zian what the issue is, and she replies that except her, every lady in the room is Chu King's woman. Well, guess who also plans to become Chu King's woman? Xiao Chuxu. Meanwhile, at the Gong residence, Gong Xu meets her mother, Gong Nian, and reports that Chu and Lan has been defeated. Gong Nian asks her to cooperate with the Chu family for the funeral so they can win Chu King Ru to their side. Gong Xu points out that she would like the engagement between Chu King and Gong Yu to be canceled, saying Chu King already has someone he loves, but Gong Nian doesn't accept. Gong Nian asks about Gong Yu, who has been on a mission, but Gong Xu replies that she has not heard from her, even contacting her many times. Gong Nian then tells her to give Gong Yu a mandatory order to return immediately. At the Six Kings base, one of her finger rings snaps, indicating that Chu and Lan has died. The Kai says they do not have any spies in the Chu family since Qin Ru is not on their side, but the Six Kings tells her that Bei Yun could still be of use. A few days later, Gong Xu covers up all of Chu and Lan's crimes, saying she was killed by the nation's largest rebel martial artists organization, the Dragon Killer, after arresting their leader. Gong Xu did this to resolve the controversy and retain the Chu family's reputation. Gong Qin Ru is called to the podium to speak, and she plays along too. She says her mother's death makes her heartbroken and thanks Gong Xu for catching the murderer and restoring her mother's innocence. She adds that she would also like to dissolve the marriage between her son and Dai Jinju, as he didn't marry her voluntarily. This causes everyone to begin to talk badly about Bei Jinyu for her cruelty and violence. Hearing this, Bai Yun gets angry and heads to the restroom. In the restroom, while she boils in anger, the cat appears and offers to help her avenge her daughter if she joins her. At night, Chu King takes drunk Chu Lion home after a celebration party. He asks about her business since his own has been solved, and part of their agreement is that he will help her become the head of the Ju family. As Zhao Lion continues to say nonsense, Chu King puts her in the next taxi and sends her home. He reasons his next mission is to investigate the Xuan New Palace since the Chu family's problems have been solved. He then notices a lady stealthily taking another lady to a corner to deprive her talents. On seeing this, he tries to stop, then something unusual happens. The lady responsible kills herself. Xu Ting wonders what is happening and reports to Gong Xu, who comes over to investigate the matter. She tells him to leave it to her and never to interfere. The next day, Xu King thinks about the event from the previous night. He reasons that Gong Yu's talents were also deprived, which means that this matter could be related to the Gong family. Zhu Lian arrives, and he asks her if she has any idea about depriving talent. She tells him that the forbidden technique has recently been spread in the black market, and that it's a cool place to buy any news as long as he is willing to pay. Later that night, Chu Ting heads to the black market on the outskirts of the imperial capital. He reasons that if what Zhu Lian told him is true, then he should be able to find some news about the Xuan New Palace there. One of the sellers calls him to have a look at some treasures, and he meets her to assess them. 
After checking them, he reasons that the items are all cheap replicas without use. He made them in the first place. The lady asks him why he dared to come to the black market, and warns him of being a top quality good himself because of his handsomeness. He tells her he is there for some news and doesn't mind paying any amount. Suddenly, a huge lady places her hand around his shoulder and tells him she will help him with what he wants if he can please her. Chu Ting agrees, and the lady takes him to a secluded place. However, Chu Ting brutally beats her and demands the information he needs from her. The lady humbly tells him about a news provider from Nightingale, the same organization Chu Ting told him about when digging for information about Liu Tong. The lady takes him to the news provider, and on getting there, Chu Ting hears two ladies yelling at each other from inside. He feels one of the voices is familiar, and he heads inside. He is shocked to see Gong Yu, and she is also surprised he came to such a place. She asks him why he came there, and Chu Ting tells her he came to obtain news from the other lady wearing purple hair. The lady introduces herself as the manager of the black market with the code name Know It All, who has all the information he might need as long as he has enough money. However, when Chu King tells her he needs information about the Xuandu Palace, Miss Know It All claims she has no information about it. Chu Ting persists, saying it's impossible since she is the boss of Nightingale. The lady says he is too reckless and won't be surprised as she finds him dead on the streets one day. Gong Yu takes Chu Ting outside and tells him never to mention the Xuan Nu Palace in the Imperial Capital. She says they won't say anything if asked, as it could put them in danger if they divulge the information. Chu Ting is surprised. Gong Yu tells him to spend the night at her place. On getting to her home the next morning, they meet Gong Pan reeking with alcohol. She finds Chu Ting attractive and slaps his butt, which angers Chu Ting, and he manhandles her. Gong Yu separates them and rebukes Gong Pan. Chu Ting and Gong Yu head inside, and Chu Ting is surprised that she lives in such a place. She tells him that most people living there are abandoned children from the Gong family and adds that the community is called the Exile Land. After a while, she tells him that the pendant he gave her really worked, improving her physical appearance. Chu Ting asks if Gong Pan is different, as he didn't sense any chi from her. And Gong Yu says she was not always that way. Twenty years ago, she was a genius in Fengjin, Imperial Capital. Chu Ting realizes they also took her martial arts talent away, and wonders what is happening with the Gong family. Gong Yu says they should stop talking about it and do something else. As she tries to kiss him, they hear Gong Pan's voice announcing the arrival of the fourth patriarch of the Gong family, Gong Nan. She slams the door open and asks Gong Yu why she didn't obey the mandatory convening order. While she steps inside, Gong Yu deliberately kisses Chu Tsing and begins to complain about Gong Nian breaking into her house without consent. Gong Nian grabs her hand and attempts to take her out, but she refuses, saying she can't be a pawn to the Gong family. Gong Nian tells her to tell Chu Tsing to leave for them to discuss, but she introduces him as her fiance and says he is no outsider. Gong Nian is surprised. She then talks about the forbidden talent transfer technique Gong Yu is supposed to take care of. She says it will be auctioned at Sejin Auction House the next night. Gong Yu tells her she will take responsibility and act immediately to end the matter. She leaves with Chu Ting. In the car, she tells Chu King she will take him back to school while she goes to the purple-haired girl. However, Chu King says he will go too, as he wants to know about the Xuan Nu Palace too. Getting to the purple-haired girl's house, Gong Yu kicks the door open. The purple-haired girl sees her and quickly tries to escape through another exit, but Chu King blocks her and brings her back. Gong Yu threatens her with a gun while asking about the forbidden talent transfer spellbook she took. The lady says she only did her old friend a favor. She suggests that someone Gong Yu also knows leaked the spellbook. After this, Chu King steps in to do his own interrogations too. He takes the gun from Gong Yu and threatens to shoot her as he asks about the location of the Xuan Nu Palace. The lady yells out, saying he is out of his mind, but Chu Ting fires the bullet at the wall behind her, and she quickly opens up. She tells Chu Ting that he has to protect her as she tells him about the Xuandu Palace. She tells him that she heard that the Xuandu Palace is on an island in the East Sea, and it has been rumored that the palace is a sect with very strict rules. She adds that she doesn't know why discussions around the Xuandu Palace are forbidden. Chu Ting acknowledges the information and playfully taps her on her shoulder. Meanwhile, unknowing to the lady, he places a tracing amulet on her. He tells Gong Yu that he is done with his questions and they can leave. The purple-haired girl starts to rant that Chu Ping promised to protect her, but he denies ever agreeing. He heads out with Gong Yu, 
while the purple-haired girl feels tricked. In the car, Gong Yu asks him what tricks he played on the purple-haired girl, and he tells her he put a small tracer on her. Chu Ting asks her about her case, and she tells him that the upcoming auction event the following night is predicted to be another bloody storm. Chu Ting sees Tang Xian and Chen Xi walking together and quickly hides from them. He wonders why they are already getting along so well. Gong Yu wonders why he is hiding, and she realizes that Chu Ting must have cheated on someone. So she decides to make the situation worse by grabbing and kissing him. Tang Xian and Chen Xi see this and they are annoyed. Chu Ting quickly pushes her away and comes down from the car. He tries to explain to them, but Gong Yu grabs him and introduces herself as his fiancée. Tang Xian and Chen Xi get angrier and attempt to punch him, but Gong Yu blocks their punches, allowing Chu Ting to escape quickly. He stealthily trails the purple-haired girl to a secluded place. The purple-haired girl meets a woman in a hooded cloak, and she apologizes for putting the forbidden talent transfer spellbook up for auction. She also confesses that she revealed a little information about the Xuan Yu palace when threatened. Angered, the woman slaps her and tells her to leave the imperial capital and never return until she is called. Meanwhile, as Chu Ting listens to their conversation, a lady bumps into him and makes a comment. The hoodie woman sees the lady and swiftly grabs her, threatening her with a dagger. She sees Chu Ting trying to escape and pursues after him instead. Chu Ting quickly wears his mask and turns back to attack. He transforms his voice and tells her he has no bad intentions against the nightingale. However, the woman insists he must die and attacks him with three throwing daggers, but Chu Ting blocks them. She launches at him again with a dagger, and Chu Ting uses his sword formation technique to create a barrier. But she breaks through the barrier and stabs his arm. Chu Ting realizes she could be a transformation run warrior. She attempts to attack him again, but he grabs her hand and punches her. He then summons his sword and launches and dashes at her, but she throws a chilly bomb at him and escapes. He sees a clock locket pendant belonging to the woman on the ground and takes it. He opens it and sees a photo of a man carrying a little girl. He thinks that the girl is so familiar. In the next scene, he sits next to a lady in a computer room at school. He wonders if she is Jia Lian as he stares at her. She shows him that three girls fought because of him, and even the students have organized a voting union to vote for their best choice. She then asks him if he will attend the auction the next day. He heads over to meet Jai Yu, who shows the list of the auction items, the most important being the Forbidden Talent Transfer Spellbook. Chu Ting asks if this book is related to the Gong family and Jai Yu explains that the book originally belonged to the Gong family, which is why they became so prosperous. Also, the Gong family has a hidden rule of selecting the most gifted kids to raise. If those kids are from the main section of the family, fine, but if they are from the subsection, their talents would be transferred to those of the main section as soon as they reach the age of eight. This is why the Gong family always has a transforming realm warrior in their twenties in every generation, which ensures their position in the emperor's supervisor place. Chu Ting then asks what happens to those whose talents were transferred. Jai Yu replies that some of them died while others went on to live miserable and depressed lives. Only a few could forget the past and move on with their lives. While they discuss, they suddenly hear a bit of two billion for the Forbidden Talents transfer spellbook. Gong Nine wins the item, and she destroys it immediately before everyone, saying the evil book has brought suffering to many lives. Gong Pan suddenly appears and begins to clap and speak sarcastically. She changes her mood and says she has spent 20 years of her life miserably, and she is there to expose that the evil technique has been the method by which the Gong family has maintained its prosperity over the years. Gong Nine gets angry and suddenly grabs her neck, calling her trash. Gong Yu tries to caution Gong Nan, but she doesn't listen. Gong Pan reveals she is the one who sold the forbidden book to the auction house so as to expose the truth behind the Gong family's evil, that it is built on the blood and bones of other people like herself. Gong Nan objects, saying that those who sacrifice themselves for the Gong family are all warriors and are not trasher. At this time, Gong Yu reveals that Gong Pan's talents were actually transferred to Gong Nian by her mom when she was severely injured 20 years ago. Gong Nian is shocked and can't believe what she is hearing. Then Gong Yu places Gong Nian's hand on Gong Pan to check if her talent still resonates with her. Gong Nian shockingly discovers that it is true. Gong Pan recounts the tragedy she's faced because of this and decides to kill herself, but Chu Ting intervenes and knocks her out before she does. He then tells Gong Nian to really put an end to the evil technique. 
Gongshu replies that her mom can't handle it alone and tells him she will explain later. Gong Yu and Xu Ting return to Gong Yu's apartment, and she tells him why she likes the place. She says it's because she wants people to look at her with envy and not pity. She was gifted in childhood, which caused her friends to envy her and brought praise from adults. However, her parents were worried for her. Her parents died shortly after and Gong Nain accepted her into her home. Gong Yu loved her so much, but things soon turned when Gong Nain transferred her talent to her own daughter. Since then, people began to look at her with pity. So she came to this location where she would be envied and not pitied. She turns and kisses Chu Ting, and he grabs her closer too. The next morning, Gong Pan wakes up and Gong Yu shows her a verdict that she has been sentenced to two years imprisonment for stealing the forbidden book and releasing it to the public, which led to many warriors' talents transfer. Gong Pan becomes sad and wishes she was rather killed, but Chu King gives her a jade pendant to help her practice martial arts again. Gong Pan becomes excited. They later step outside and meet Gong Shu. They soon begin to discuss the origin of the forbidden talent transfer technique. She says it was given to the Gong family by Empress Kingshan, and the Gong family occupied the supervisor position for hundreds of years because of it. The Empress position is also involved, so it depends on the Empress to either get rid of the technique or not. Gong Yu asks how they can make the Empress do this, and Gong Shu reminds her about the National Warrior Championship. She says that the championship this year is rumored the Empress will grant one wish of the winner, which means they can ask the Empress to eradicate the technique. Gong Xu says she will participate in the championship and take the first position. Chu Ting asks if men can also participate and they are shocked. He tells them he also wants to join the championship. Gong Xu says that though no rules stop men from joining, no man has ever participated in the championship. Gong Yu says Gong Xu and her mom can help him get in with their influence, and she agrees to help. Xu Ting returns to his dorm, and Wami tries to sneak in without Chengxi and Tangxi and finding out. They tap him from behind and violently push into his bed. Xu Ting is in trouble and maintains his position on the bed, waiting for punishment. Chengxi asks if the lady they saw with him is the fiancée from the Gong family he talked about, and he confirms it. Tang Xian tells him that Chengxi said he is already married and she asks how many more things he is hiding from her. He apologizes he hasn't told her many things about himself. Then, Chengxi talks about Meng Zui's disappearance since he entered the National University. He tells him he doesn't want to drag them into it, and Chengxi reasons it might be related to the Xuandu Palace. He asks them if they are now friends since he has been seeing them together, but they deny it. Tang Xian and Chengxi later spend time together, discussing their love for Chu Ting. Chu Ting watches them from afar and is sorry for bothering them. He wants all of them and doesn't want to lose anyone, especially Meng Zui. Meanwhile, on an island in the East Sea at the Xuandu Palace, Meng Zui refuses to take a medicine disguised to be for her baby's health, knowing it is an abortion medicine. A lady walks in to tell her that men cannot come close to the Xuandu Palace, but she, Meng Zui, ruined her palace's reputation by choosing to return with a baby. Meng Zui mentions that the lady also called the name of her child name in the dream. The lady gets angry and attempts to hit Meng Zui for daring to enter her room, but Meng Zui blocks it. The lady hits her hard, throwing her off. She then activates some dark martial arts and attacks Meng Zui, but Meng Zui quickly uses the dragon chi to form a barrier to protect herself. The lady is surprised and takes her leave. Meng Zui reasons that she has to get out of there as soon as possible. In the next scene, Chu King ponders hard on locating the Xuan Nu and discovering its relationship with the National University and the Empress. He reasons that he will be able to meet the Empress when he reaches the final round of the championship. Xiao Chuxu runs to him excitedly to show him the pill she found. She tells him about a new pharmaceutical company that opened in the Imperial capital with amazing healing medicines. She is talking about Yi Pharmaceuticals and is surprised Chu Ting already knows about it. Chu King tells her that he formulated the medicine but couldn't make it. Xiao Chuxu is wild that Chu Ting could heal her leg and even develop such a powerful medicine. She tells him to join her team as she wants to make the best medicine that can cure every disease in the world. Chu Ting tells her that he is a shareholder in Yi Pharmaceuticals and can have a word with them on her behalf. They both visit the new branch of Yi Pharmaceuticals to discuss a collaboration between the Yi and Xiao families. On getting there, Chu Ting is surprised to see Yi Wanking. He wonders when she came to the imperial capital. Chu Ting receives a message from Chengxi asking him to try to make peace with her sister in the few days she will be staying, and he agrees to it just because of her. After a while, 
Chuck Su tells Chu Sing that Wang Qing accepted to cooperate with the Chao family. Wang Qing says it's her honor to have the Chao family support Yi Pharmaceuticals. She suddenly coughs, and her handkerchief becomes stained with blood. On seeing this, Chu Ting reasons that Wang Qing should still have two years to live, but coughing out blood now could mean that bad luck might soon happen to her. He wonders how Chen Xi will bear it if she suddenly dies too. He excuses himself and Chou Chuck Su, saying they have something to discuss. Wang Qing is sad, thinking Chu King is still mad at her for leaking the news about the dragon. Outside the company's building, Chu King tells Chuck Su about Wang Qing's condition and asks her to help him with some extremely rare medicine ingredients. She tells him that, coincidentally, they still have those ingredients at the Chao Mansion, as she also used them to lengthen her lifespan. She holds Chu King's hand, and they haste to get the ingredients. Meanwhile, the Sixth Prince sees Chu Ting as her vehicle passes. She is told that he is the one who killed Chu and Lan. She orders her agent to send more people to kill him so he won't cause trouble in the future. After getting the necessary ingredients, Chu King leaves the Chao Mansion and heads back alone. Some weapons suddenly come flying toward him, but he evades them. Then some assassins appear and launch an attack on him. He summons his sword and blocks their attacks. They suddenly get in formation and start to spin around very fast, casting a spell on him that begins to hurt his head. They make several attack attempts, but he blocks them. He reasons that he can't continue like this for long as his strength will be drained if he doesn't break the formation. He keeps calm, closes his eyes, and starts to condense godly power. The assassins continue to attack, but now he blocks all the attacks easily with his eyes shut. He tells them he can't be affected by their enchantment as long as he keeps his eyes shut. The assassins assume another formation and launch another attack, but he makes a counterattack with his sword, killing all except one. He approaches the remaining one and uses the soul-searching technique on her. However, he doesn't find any useful information. He only sees a woman ordering the assassins to kill him at all costs. He is severely injured and reasons that he needs an urgent cure. He heads to Xiao Mansion and breaks into Chuck Su's room through the window, writhing in pain. Chuck Su panics and wonders what happened, attracting the attention of Xiao King and Xiao Lu. They discover he is affected by the assassinating martial art, which supposedly has no cure. Chu King tells them he knows how to cure it and just needs them to get the necessary ingredients for him. After a while, they provide the necessary ingredients and leave him alone in the room to treat himself. Chu Ting reasons that the Xiao family has every kind of treasure, and he should recover in two days with these ingredients. Chuck Xi stands by the room door for the next two days and refuses to eat anything, waiting for Chu Ting to be done. While she waits, a strange thunder and lightning suddenly strike the Xiao mansion while Chu Ting is still inside. The others manage to escape and are shocked since there are anti-thunder devices outside. After a while, the building collapses and Chuck Su cries and hopes that Chu King has not died. Xiao King becomes worried for her daughter, but suddenly, Chu Ting breaks out of the ruins. He is completely healed and appears to be stronger. Chuck Xu jumps at him in excitement, but soon passes out. The next day, Chu Ting tells them that what happened was a phenomenon called Thunder Tribulation, which occurs whenever a practitioner reaches a certain level and breaks through. Xiao Lu says that she knows about some records concerning the Thunder Tribulation in ancient scrolls, but she has never witnessed anyone reach the level in real life. She calls him extraordinary, but Chu Ting reasons that this world is the extraordinary one. Chuck Xu appears and both Xiao King and Xiao Lu excuse themselves so she can have time alone with Chu Ting. She asks if he could get rid of the poison, and Chu King says that he not only got rid of the poison but also enhanced his realm. Thanks to her letting him use the ingredient storage. That night, Xiao King meets the Empress at the palace. The Empress asks about the thunder that collapsed her house, but Xiao King denies it saying it collapsed because it was an old building. She tries to protect Chu King from the Empress. After she leaves, the Empress perceives she is lying as the lightning that occurred was not ordinary and was like the black thunder of the nine heavens. She adds that it is very difficult for men to advance in their practice of Tao and the women who can are all in the Xuan Du Palace, which suggests that the Xiao family is working with the Xuan Du Palace in secret. She orders someone to look into the matter saying she won't forgive the Xiao family if they dare to betray her. Can Chu King be protected from the radar of the Empress? Let us know if you want the next part in the comment section by commenting reverse. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you guys in the next video.